The remake of Roadhouse is now streaming on Amazon Prime, and I have to review it because the original movie is what gave me my philosophy for film criticism. Be nice until it's time to not be nice. This video is brought to you by Stamps.com. Sign up with promo code MERLE for a special offer and stay tuned after this video for more info. Hello everybody, I'm Dan Merle back in the home studio. It's so nice to be home with my review of Roadhouse, the 2024 remake of the 1989 classic. All the businesses in town belong to it. Everybody pay. Does a hobby horse have a wooden dick? This version of Roadhouse is directed by Doug Wyman, who in the lead up to the movie's release said that this was maybe his best film. And as somebody who's seen Swingers, The Born Identity, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, and Edge of Tomorrow, I think that's a dubious claim at best. The screenplay for Roadhouse is from Anthony Bagarazzi, who co-wrote The Nice Guys with Shane Black, that's a good movie, and first-time screenwriter Charles Mondry. And this remake is nominally based on Patrick Swayze's throat-ripping 1989 cult classic. I say nominally tied to the original because other than the name and the basic premise, there's really nothing in common between the original movie and this one. There is no throat ripping. I was very disappointed in that. There's not even a reference to the kind of guys that someone may have had intercourse with while incarcerated. I used to guys like you in prison. Jake Gyllenhaal plays Dalton, a former UFC fighter who's recruited by bar owner Frankie, played by Jessica Williams, to spend a month as an enforcer at her Florida Keys beachside bar that's called, appropriately, The Roadhouse. And while The Roadhouse, I guess, plays into the conventions of remakes and reboots nowadays, it is kind of sad that a great bar name like The Double Deuce can't even survive the modern remake process. It's a roadhouse, but it's called The Road House. Get it? Still unresolved. Just as Dalton begins to tame the unruly regulars, a sleazy real estate developer played by Billy Magnuson ramps up his efforts to seize the valuable land the roadhouse sits on, which leads to the arrival of many goons, including the psychopathic enforcer Knox, played by Conor McGregor in his acting debut. Roadhouse is an interesting experiment in that it takes a script that's basically a direct-to-video ripoff of the original movie and puts that script in the hands of an incredibly talented and magnetic leading actor. And no, I'm not talking about Conor McGregor, who has precisely one note in this movie that involves a constant smile and dialogue I could understand 65% of. I'm talking about Jake Gyllenhaal, who commits 100% to his role as Dalton. Uh, before we start, do you have insurance? What? I you have medical insurance? Your coverage good, like you have dental. He seemed to care more about this movie than anybody else in front of or behind the camera. And through sheer force of will, he tries to drag this version of Roadhouse out of the forgettable nature of the screenplay and into a crazier, more zany world. And it almost works, almost but not quite. The original Roadhouse is not a sacred cow. It actually makes sense to remake that film because it's not to be taken seriously. Those are actually the kind of films I think should be remade, the ones that have wacky concepts, but that you can kind of have fun with and play around with a little bit. The worst possible thing you could do if you're remaking a movie as silly as Roadhouse is to ask us to take it seriously. And that's what 2024's Roadhouse does far too often. It asks us, the audience, to take this movie seriously. Some movies should definitely be taken seriously. This movie isn't one of them. The scenes where this remake is allowed to be ridiculous, over the top, almost goofy in a self-aware way, are by far the best, but they're weighed down by useless subplots, a half-baked romance, and cookie-cutter characters that you've seen a hundred times before. It's not that they didn't try completely. I mean, they were obviously going for something when they cast Conor McGregor, and he's definitely doing something. It didn't work for me, but at least it was a swing for the fences, and if the movie had kept taking those swings, then I think it might have been a lot more enjoyable than it is. The two actors I felt definitely knew what kind of movie this should be were Jake Gyllenhaal and Arturo Castro, who plays a henchman who sort of drifts outside of the plot, is almost a casual observer for what's going on. He's great, and then Billy Magnuson comes close to matching that tongue-in-cheek energy that the movie needs, but this evil tycoon role is just too derivative for him to transcend it. There are a couple of scenes where you feel that energy wanting to kind of break out, 
but it's just not able to. I think that Billy Magnuson could have been a great over-the-top villain, and had McGregor worked better, then I think those two could have been a great duo. In case you missed it, Doug Liman had a huge public beef with Amazon over the release of this movie because he said that Roadhouse deserved a theatrical release, that it would play like gangbusters with a live audience, that it tested better than any movie that he'd ever made. Well, I can tell you that I did see this movie with a live audience. They did a preview screening in a theater with other people, which is not a way that anybody else is going to be able to watch the movie. And I can tell you from my experience that when the end credits rolled, the roof was still firmly attached to the theater. There was really no danger of it being blown off. There was a response that I would call polite. The few scenes where it's allowed to go kind of crazy. You did get a somewhat big reaction, but it seemed like most people were just sort of watching with indifference. I feel like the reaction that Lyman was saying the movie should get is based on the version of the movie that we should be watching, but that's not the version that we get. The majority of this movie is a by-the-numbers action film that honestly feels like it should be going directly to a streaming service because so many movies that go direct to streaming are pretty forgettable. The original Roadhouse is a movie that people still talk about 35 years later, whether they loved it or whether they hated it. I sincerely doubt that any conversation about this version of Roadhouse is going to last more than 35 minutes after the end credits have rolled, and then you're just going to move on to something else. This isn't a great movie, but it's not atrocious, and when I was trying to decide where to rank it on my personal scale, I was between not a fan and the very lower echelon of the It's Fine ranking, and I decided to go with the lower level It's Fine ranking, I mean just the bottom of that barrel, only because of Jake Gyllenhaal and the moments of life that he does inject into the movie. He, to me, along with a couple of the other actors, were the only redeeming factor of this, and it really comes down to the rewatchability test. Would I be angry if I had to rewatch this movie again? Because of what Jake Gyllenhaal is doing, and because of the couple of scenes that reach the potential of what this movie could have, or in my opinion should have been, I wouldn't be angry at having to rewatch it. And that's really why it lands in the It's Fine range. If it's a lazy Sunday night or a lazy Saturday afternoon and somebody I'm with says, hey, I never saw that Roadhouse remake, I wouldn't hate the idea of watching it again. I just wouldn't really love it either. So those are my thoughts on Roadhouse. What do you think? Are you going to be firing it up on streaming this weekend? Let me know down in the comments below. And before we go, I want to thank the sponsor for this review, Stamps.com. This episode's brought to you by Stamps.com. Spring is officially here, which I think means we're also officially not in the new year anymore. But with Stamps.com, you can keep moving year-round by streamlining all your shipping to make sure that you're operating at peak efficiency. Postage rates have gone up once again, but luckily Stamps.com offers rates that you can't find anywhere else, like up to 89% off USPS and UPS. Plus, they automatically tell you your cheapest and fastest shipping options. And it's not just confirmed find the business hours, you can access the services you need from your computer anytime, day or night. For 25 years, Stamps.com has been an indispensable partner for over a million businesses who need to ship literally anything from checks to merch, and you can use Stamps.com wherever you do business. All you need is a computer and a printer, and with the Stamps.com app, it's like having a post office in your pocket 24-7. Keep your mailing and shipping moving at the speed of your business with Stamps.com. Sign up with promo code MERLE for a special offer that includes a four-week trial plus free postage and a free digital scale, no long-term commitments or contracts. Just go to Stamps.com, click the microphone at the top of the page, and enter code MERLE. Thanks to Stamps.com for sponsoring this review, and thank you for watching. Be sure to stay tuned right here for more movie news, reviews, box office, and more. Until next time, be nice, and I'll see you then. Bye.